Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 8, Episode 2. So this would have been 2021. Let's get started. And please subscribe to my channel and leave me a thumbs up. That would be most appreciated. And now let's look at our contestants. Now, in order to be on the program, you have to have submitted a self-portrait. That's what you're judged on in order to get here. And as far as I can tell, thousands of people apply every year. And all three judges have to agree on each one of these participants. So that must be, that must be an interesting process. And this looks like a really good field so far. Um, I, I think the painting just, paintings just get better and better and better. And I think the program gets better and better and better as well, although we know it is controversial. Oh, I love that one. Oh, I'm very curious to see what he does. Oh, wow, that's a nice piece. And, oh, look at that. And we do have a watercolorist, I think, today. I wonder if we've already passed the watercolor. Well, we'll, we'll see if that shows up. This is very unusual in terms of its coloring and motif as well. Uh, but it's... Uh, so there, there's an interesting different voice, I'll say about that one, just in terms of the color palette, really. Nice job. And as we know, there are nine participants and three models. Oh, look at that. Wow. Oh, this is going to be a hard competition to judge. But remember, they only have four hours, so we know that they have to be good at working quickly and that's a whole different skill set now our first model up is giles bandreth he's a former member of parliament and he dressed for the part <laughs> this is this is quite the get up don't you think on this side of the pond uh our politicians do not dress to this extent uh but uh but there's a lot to be said for uh, British traditions and and all of that pomp and circumstance. So four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and we get to see what they've done. Oh, our watercolorist is coming up in this heat. That's a nice job. Boy, that's beautiful. It's not a watercolor, but um, it's it's a good likeness. It's uh, they definitely came prepared for the day. They got the job done. There's nothing uneven or not finished. So that's, that's quite good. All right, now we, we back away. Yeah, it holds up quite nicely. I think that's a good piece. That's gonna be kind of tough to beat. She looks, it looks very confident. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, nice, nice job. Okay, here's the next one up. This is, uh, oh, now you see, now you just got to my soft spot. See, I, I love this kind of painting. I love this kind of painting, which is, um, it has a brevity to it, which really speaks to me, and very careful mixing. And even got got the uh, the coloring. You know, he was a, a pretty pale guy. Oh, look from far away too. Oh, I think that's a winning piece. Just something about, I guess what I'm speaking to here is not anything technical, just a real sensitivity when it comes to painting the subject. The, the subject looks very present in that painting. Here's the watercolor. This is not as good a likeness as the first two were. Um, it's, uh, I have a personal bias. This is gonna sound so picky and so wrong, but you know, I've volunteered for this position, although no one said they wanted it. I really don't like when nostrils are black. You gotta, you gotta tamp that down. I know they appear black on your screen and in a photograph, but they're not. They're, they're really not. So that's just a small adjustment. But you see, even from far away, where does your eye go? It goes to those nostrils. Oh, gosh. That is just a, a you know, if she had time overnight and looked tomorrow, she would notice that and probably uh, make an adjustment. So this is the one that Giles picks to go home. So good for him. It's the one I would have picked too. It's a very sensitive and careful study of him. Now, the next one up is uh, Karen Gibson, and she is the former director of intelligence of the USA, which is news to me. <laughs> I thought, I thought it was all men up there, but who knows? Uh, love the color scheme that they set her up with. Boy, they love that black chair. I think I have to do an honorable mention episode just for that black chair. It shows up in almost every episode to some extent. That's a beautiful job. Very interesting that she puts that cut out of the print in there as well. This is the woman that did that very different colored self-portrait at the very beginning, which also had this patterned cloth 
painted on. So that must be a signature thing that she does in her paintings. Here's a small detail. You know, you don't paint gold. It's an illusion of gold because, of course, we have no tube of gold. We have no tube of ocean. We have no tube of dust. You know, we have to make these things look as if they are metal or make them look as if they're atmospheric. And she was able to, oh, that looks better with the two pieces of, of uh, cloth inserted instead. Yeah, that's, that's a better job. That's beautifully done and definitely a likeness of her. Boy, I think they're going to pick her because she, she has a different take. This one is not as strong much more flat representation. Um, yeah, I don't, ha I wish I had more to say about this one. I'm just guessing that she just didn't, probably didn't have the kind of time that she really required in order to, to really get done what she needed to get done. So that one just is not as strong. This one I think is very strong. Oh, I really, oh, my heart on this one. Um, Sometimes a piece just really speaks to you, and this one really speaks to me. You know, there's no devices to hide behind here. There's nothing gimmicky. This is just straight, flat-on, great painting. Oh, I remember his self-portrait, which I was really impressed with as well. So he's a very seasoned painter. That's a beautiful piece. Uh, so far today, oh boy, that's, that's very strong and in the running. And it would have been really challenging because you have her dress in the background, almost the same tone. So you, you got some real value uh, decisions to make when it comes to representing what they had in front of them. Ah, so they, I, I thought so. I thought they would pick a voice that was somewhat different. Oh, this is the one she picks to take home. So uh, sorry about that. So this one that's gonna go in her home. Now the next one up is Sophie Cook's son. She's an English actress. And as my interview with Chris Longridge uh, one of the subjects that came up was how difficult it is to paint someone who's young and has kind of a perfectly smooth, sy symmetrical uh, face, <laughs> which is oftentimes what happens with young actresses. So as a result, uh, none of the people in this particular heat, uh, you know, these three, uh, got a likeness of her, which, um, you know, it happens sometimes. Certainly happened, as we know, with the Stanley Tucci. That was the first one where we had absolutely no resemblance to him at all. So um, I don't have much to say about this painting because, um, you know, this is portrait art of this year and it does not have resemblance to her. Does it have roundness of forms? Absolutely. There's some really nice uh, looking at skin tones and turning forms there. But overall, when you pull away, it's very controlled and very, um, uh, you know, it's flat. It's, it's just flat as if the figure was cut out and pasted there. So, you know, uh, your nerves must get really get in the way on that day. Here's one that is a little bit more as if it looks like it's emerging from the paper as opposed to being uh, pasted on top. Does it have a resemblance to her? No, it doesn't have a resemblance to her at all. But like I said, it's so difficult when you don't have a face with very much character or a place to really anchor in. Um, so it's very pleasant, so I'm just going to view it as, as a piece. You know, is it a pleasant piece? Sure. Would you like that on your wall? Yeah, who wouldn't? This one, I don't, I, I just, plan, oh, I just said it. I don't like it. I revealed my hand. I tend to not like black used in paintings because of how harsh it is. So if you can get your, val, not make your value as dark and dull as black and use a substitution for that instead or mix, mix um, complementary colors so that you can get the darkness that you want, but that it doesn't cancel out color because there's a lot of color cancellation going on overall in this painting. I don't think the artist means for that to happen, but it can happen when you lean on that black tube of paint a little bit too much. And I, I think that's what happened here. It also has a very, it's very cold. You know, you've got black and you've got blue going on. So that, that just is gonna make a colder painting. I tend to like higher, higher key, warmer paintings. So this is the one that she picks, uh, Sophie picks to go home. So yay. I don't think any of those people are going to make it to the finals, but I'm wrong all the time, so let's see what happens. So now we get to the final judging. The final judging begins, and only three of these people are going to go forward into the semifinals of this episode, and from there, only one will go on to the finals of the, uh, the semifinals of the program. You know how I feel about this one. I think it's extremely sensitively done, very carefully layered in terms of brush strokes, very carefully considered. Oh, this one too. It's such a mature piece. It's, this artist really knew how to, where to, where to direct your eye and why he wanted to direct your eye there. 
this is the one, uh, frankly, I think they're going to pick this one. I thought they were going to pick this one uh, from the get-go because um, it, it had, quite frankly, because it has a little bit of a cultural reference and I think they're going to go for that. Oh, oh, I didn't realize that this young man had done that uh, more sensitive portrait. Oh, here, I'm sorry, my mind wandered. What we have here is we have their self-portrait next to what they did today. So we can look at what they did when they had unlimited time and what they submitted and what they did today in only four hours. There's very, there's a lot of consistency here. I like the one he had less time for. I think he did a great job today. So he goes forward in my opinion. We talked about this one that she has a very different color palette and that she likes to put in these, these uh, cloth design motifs, which we haven't seen before. And I'm pretty sure they're gonna to respond to that because they are flat out, they said they like contemporary uh, painters and they want uh, different voices. And I think this is gonna to speak to the, uh, the kind of diversity in painting that they wanna see. This is much more um, of the kind of painting that I'm shooting for when I'm painting, which is just, I hope gosh darn good painting and carefully edited and carefully considered. So, um, you know, oh gosh, I'm so glad I'm not a judge. I, there, but, uh, but this is one I want in my home. That's what I'll say about that. Now the final judging begins. And like I said, only one of these people is gonna go forward into the finals. And hashtag Joe is always wrong. I am nearly always wrong and that's fine because I like all of these painters and I do wanna see more of them. So let's see who the winner is. Dun, 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 dun. The winner is, ah. I thought so. I thought it might be this this younger girl, uh, simply because of it's it's a gosh darn good painting, and it has that this sort of fabric motif thing going on that she seems to do consistently in the work that we've seen so far, and I think they're going to find that really exciting and different. So we get to see more of her in the semifinals, which will probably be episode nine. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye bye.